Hello, I'm Paul and I'm here today to talk to you about Codel's Tunnel Monitoring Range. So let's take a look at the monitoring requirements for safety in gases and particulate in road and rail tunnels. Um, Codel has been in this market for 38 years now and uh, over that time we've learned just about everything there is possible to develop a reliable instrumentation for this market. And in fact, we've got more than a thousand installations around the world. Um, you can see there, there's some very prestigious tunnels. Um, Rotang Tunnel in India, the highest tunnel in the world. Um, Heathrow Airport. And in fact, um, there are a lot more than this. Uh, Heathrow Airport's there. And, uh, and Euro Tunnel as well. So very world recognized brand. And so what goes to make up component? What are the sources of pollution? And so you've basically got two groups there. And we'll, we'll look at these in a little bit closer. So particulates. Uh, particulates have two sources. Um, they have both uh, gaseous emissions caused by incomplete combustion of fuel, but there's also mechanical wear and tear. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Uh, particulates, PM 2.5, and PM10s that we're familiar with on the news, these are very harmful. And not only that, they can combine with moisture in the air and it can get some very, it, it combines to add to poor visibility. Um, so you need to know how much dust is in there. The gases we look at in a tunnel, uh, this, this changes, it's different, but basically we've got CO, carbon monoxide, and we've got NO and NO2, so NOx, the sum of the two. Um, CO is a, again another incomplete combustion product and uh, we're looking at levels that are greater than 100 ppm there being harmful and uh, you get much above that and as we know carbon monoxide can, can be fatal. So um, poor car comb combustion is, is the cause of that. NOx, uh, the sum of NO and NO2 is different. It's a temperature product, so it's caused by the spark and the high temperature within the engine, which breaks down nitrogen and oxygen in the air to form NO and NO2, depending how far, um, how complete the reaction is. So NO2 uh, is very harmful. Um, in fact, we're looking at greater than one ppm can be harmful to a healthy adult. And asthma sufferers are, are even lower than that. Um, as for non-exhaust particular, um, so these are these are basically brake dust, uh, wear and tear. So the bits and pieces that come off cars as they uh, roll down the road with mechanical wear, and I guess tyre dust and all sorts of part of these. These tunnels are actually very dirty when you work inside them, surprisingly dirty. So and there's all sorts of things, and this is. The effect and it's moving the piston effect of cars and trains going through the tunnels keeps this dust airborne so it's particularly dangerous to human life so in order to control these parameters the gas the particulate uh, we're going to need some fans and the jet fans you'll see in all of these road tunnels above a certain length um, are switched in using these kinds of sensors set on safe limits and, uh, and they will move the air through the road tunnel in that, in that way. Um, and in fact, the levels that you would look at for this, and um, every operator will have his own idea of what ventilation thresholds are dependent on the fans, the layout, uh, and volume of traffic, the number of, of bores through the, through the uh, the tunnel, but um, we've certainly seen these with 90 ppm, 90 ppm of CO and 15 of, of NO. Um, so these are the points where the operators will switch in the fans and move the air out of the, of the tunnel, making it safe. Um, NO2, you can see there, has got a, a really small fraction. In fact, it's 0.4 ppm or 400 ppb as a safe level. This is a very low level 
and uh, we'll talk more about that in, um, when we get to it. So on the screen now we've got a, a typical five day trace there for a, a road tunnel, and visibility in black, um, NO in blue, NO2 is that purple colour, purple red, and CO at the bottom there in green. So for each of the five days, you can see, of course, during the, from daylight hours through the middle part of the day, it's higher. Um, I suspect day two is possibly a weekend day on this. It's a little bit lower traffic. Uh, but you can see, in fact, this tunnel in the black there, this operator was controlling on NO, the black. And, uh, and, uh, and he thought the tunnel was actually in control. Uh, and in fact, in, in previous years, the thinking was that there was a fixed ratio between NO and NO2 in a tunnel. So they would take a percentage of NO, like, uh, something like 10%, and they'd call it NOx. Uh, and in fact, the reality is something very different. So what the operator on this tunnel thought he was in control. And in fact, if you look at the red line there, and, and you can see there's a horizontal white line across, that's the limit of 400 ppb. The NO2 is out of control. It's well above, more than double, in some cases above the safe exposure limit. So this proves two things. Firstly, you have to measure NO, NO2. And secondly, you can't use the ratio. So you need to have multiple uh, gases measured in it has to be measured. Um, so there's a lesson to be learned from that. Um, so how do you do this? How do you measure these things and with what? Um, and there's no proper rule for where these things are measured. Each tunnel has a different construction, different length, elevation, a difference in height between entrance and exit, weather, local weather conditions. So. Each tunnel, there is no hard and fast rule, but the designers uh, would have their own ideas uh, for the requirements. But the different instrumentation packages you can find in these. Um, so I start at the top left with uh, a gas measurement. So the gas measurement, I'm going to go into these in, in a little more detail in a moment, but basically you've got gas analyzers in there, They're measuring CO, NO, NO2, but even SO2 as well. We have luminance sensors. We have illuminance sensors. Um, we have different kinds of sensors. The, the gas sensors can be uh, single gas, they can be combined, they can be infrared, or they can be chemical cell in nature. Um, and finally, where visibility is there as well. So, and this is basically an opacity mode uh, measurement. Uh, and we call it smoke or opacity in this application. And again, it's the particulates we were mentioning before. And this can be combined with certain gas sensors to form a, an easy installation or even be a separate standalone device. Um, and finally, we've got flow. So flow is very important to measure because it tells you how much air the fans are moving. And then there are two different methods of, uh, of uh, measuring flow dependent on the access that you have. Okay, so let's take a quick look through a, a typical manufacturer's range. And of course, this is Codel, so I'm going to put up the images that I have for Codel's own products. So they're numbered 100 through 800, but don't pay much attention to those numbers. So, okay, on the screen now we've got, I'm just going to step through uh, a different, uh, the full range and the options with you. And uh, this is really a fast run through. So all of the data sheets will be on the virtual booth. So please take the time to have a look around. Um, and there's all sorts of videos and there'll be application notes there, case studies. Um, so, okay, so let's work through this. Um, so combinations of equipment on this, this slide, we've got the gas a gas analyzing range. Um, so firstly, um, Tunnel Tech 200 range. Uh, again, the, each one of these is subdivided into a range of, of, of analyzers, different combinations. So you have visibility there measured by a high power LED. And 
and we use infrared on this range to measure CO and NO and any combination of those. Uh, and while we start this, it goes without saying all of these devices are minimum IP65. Uh, they're very low cost of ownership, an easy installation. These are the design criteria. We look for long-term reliability and, uh, and, long in, uh, and stability with long times between recalibration. So Tunnotech 200 is the, uh, the main backbone of the range of the infrared range. Uh, and of course, you cannot measure NO2 with visible or infrared. So for that purpose, we jump across there to the Tunnel Tech 205. And, uh, and again, the image isn't very big here, but this is a transmitter receiver on a one meter tube. And you can see in this case, the tube is closed. The site path is closed and it's filtered inlet because there's a very high interference factor, almost one-on-one -on -one with dust. So you cannot measure NO2 in the presence of dust. And for that reason, we close it off and we filter through sintered stainless steel into the fully clean site path. So this is delivered, aligned, calibrated, and ready to go. Um, we got 40 PPE, PPB resolution, which is zero, 0 0.04 ppm so it's very accurate and very low measurement so these are parts per billion and in fact we use a very high powered ultraviolet led to measure this and again because it's clean there's almost a zero maintenance required um, so we're jumping on now to the next range and the next technique which is uh, we switch to electrochemical cell and uh, in this case, we add in the ability to measure SO2 as well in certain devices. But let's make a start with the TT700 range. So this is the range which also includes the LED for visibility measurement, as in the Tornotec 200 range. And then we have chemical cells there for CO, NO, NO2. Uh, and then again, also any combination of those as well to add. Uh, to visibility, and again, this is another two-piece installation, same as the TT two hundred. Um, if you find the user doesn't need visibility, then we can jump onto the Tunnel Tech five hundred range, and just as in this image here, you'll see this is a single-sided device, and uh, these later ones all have their own integrated display as well, so they're fully set up. There's no PC needed, a laptop, in order to set them up. So again, it's the same as a Tomatex 700, but we just delete the visibility from it. And finally, on the range, so individual sensors we've been asked for in the past, and this is a brand new product on the market now. And these are individual chemical sensor, small module, its own built-in controller. And so we've got CO, NO, and NO2 in this case as before, but we add in SO2 and O2. And you can also see at this point we've put the protection to IP69. Stainless steel is standard with the addition for uh, oxygen as well. So that's the range of gas sensors and, uh, and particulates. So let's take a look at the flow sensors. That's a slightly different mentality here as you look at these two devices. And, uh, and the basic difference is the one on the left, the TT305, is a single point measurement. So you'd find these on the sidewall, various intervals through a road tunnel, measuring the flow via a bidirectional ultrasonic. Um, the one on the right there is the Tunnel Tech 800 range, which is a cross tunnel monitor. So up to 40 meters path length gives you the total flow across the tunnel. And, but you have to be careful when you look at these, the different prices of course, uh, but the cross tunnel one, you have to have access to both sides of the carriageway. So if there's two bores, then both, both lanes need to be closed for access. You can't maintain or install this on a single side. If you only have access to one side, then you have to use the single point on the left. They both have the same accuracy. They're both 
ultra reliable. You can see stainless steel as standard again and again IP69 on that. Um, and so finally we start to look at the light monitors we've got and there's two different terms here but I'll explain why we need them. And uh, basically when you're driving to a road tunnel your car or your vehicle is moving faster than your eyes can adjust. So when you're driving, it takes time, it takes a few seconds for your eyes to adjust down. And for that reason, you can be blinded. So this is going into darkness the same, on the image on the left and the image on the right, being dazzled by the bright emerging into sunlight on a bright day. And then again, this is because your eyes take a little bit of time to switch. Um, so it's important to have graduated illumination in a tunnel. And you'll find the brighter, so when you're entering a tunnel, the brighter lights are near the mouth of the tunnel and you move in, they will step down as your eyes gradually dilate to take in more light. And of course that helps you when you're leaving a tunnel as well. And so how do you do that? Let's have a look. So there's two terms here, luminance and illuminance. Okay, so the luminance monitor is the one that looks like a video camera on the bottom left. So this is the guy and he sits looking outside of the tunnel, looking at the dark mouth of the tunnel. So he's got general outside luminance, the difference between the tunnel end, entrance dark and outside light. And the little box with a dome on it, the grey one there, is illuminance. Um, so you'll find these along the different lighting zones in the tunnel. So these are actual positive feedback for the performance of the lighting. And these two devices together um, would allow the tunnel control, control engineers to design a system to keep his lighting at the optimum level and prevent drivers from uh, causing accidents through lack of vision. And uh, okay, that's just about Everything from me on the screen now is the uh, contact sales at codel.co.uk with the phone number as well. Um, all the details uh, are on the booth. Have a look around the virtual booth. Download the videos, take copies of data sheets and please let us know if we can help you in any way. So, okay, thank you for your time.